Welcome all the YouTube. Um, it's supposed to be 18 degrees in the UK today. It clearly isn't. It's overcast. It's blooming cold and I've got a service to do on, on this. Um, just had a parcel turn up for one of my favourite suppliers with all the bits to do it. So it just remains for me now to probably put a jacket on because <laughs> it's colder than I thought it was going to be and um, open up the package, have a look inside and bang them on the car. Easy as that. What could possibly go wrong? Five minute job. But we're on lockdown, so we've got nothing else better to do. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, use these guys a lot. They are brilliant, they really are. Um, so this one is for a service um, that I'm gonna do on the, the car you just seen, the silver A3, the convertible. It's the Weiss car, and it needs uh, new oil, filter, and uh, obviously air filter as well. So they are all in this package, so let's get it open and then We'll start getting the oil changed on it. Let's dive inside. So we've got our, a male filter and we've got some wonderful Miller's oil which I've used now for several years. Use it in the S3 and that's when I started using it. And it's good stuff. I like it. So we've got some long life trident from Miller's. Um, we have got a air filter, a tiny little air filter. The job and I'm hoping as long as OP haven't let me down yes this is what I enjoy OP air fresheners I know it sounds a bit sad but these things are gorgeous and they last for ages as well so um yeah always get an air fresher with the air, the OP orders and um, it brightens my day up <laughs> that's all right let's um Let's get sorted, get the car jacked up, get the bottom panel off and uh, let's get the oil changed. all jacked up and uh, hopefully as you saw there um, we've got the axle stands under I got chastised in one of my videos for not putting those under properly uh, I don't let the jacks down on the jack stands the jack stands are there as a backup so if the trolley jacks do fail and go down it'll end up resting itself on those particular stands just there now I think as I mentioned before in the last video um, for some reason this Audi has got an aluminium cover on it which is uh, it's the first one I've ever seen, I'll be honest, it, it kind of threw me when I first saw it. Uh, they're usually plastic and they've usually got a couple of clips and don't take much to get off. But for some reason, uh, this one is aluminium. Um, I don't know why, I have no idea at all. Um, it's a UK car, it's not come from anywhere that I believe is a harsh area, but yeah, such is life. Right, so we'll get that off and then um, get the oil drained. So it's all coming back to me now why I dislike this particular job last time I did it so for reference uh, the screws these little kiddies here are T30s there you go T30 socket and they are basically all the way along the front of the plate all the way down the side of the plate all the way down the back of the plate <laughs> back down this side again obviously then you've got for some god knows what reason I have no idea a 10mm there and a 10mm there 
and then right up at the front you've got a 13 mil just in there and when you take those two 13 mils off and you take all the other bolts out there's two 13 mil slotted at the back which you loosen off just there and the whole plate slides forward so this is probably the most time consuming part of the whole job <laughs> again I have no idea why it's metal um, it's very unusual for how they're usually plastic and, and quite easy it's usually only about 10 bolts and they, they come straight off but uh, yeah this one ain't going anywhere quickly put it that way so if a couple of bolts fell out you've got no fear of losing these whatsoever <laughs> they are absolutely rock solidly bolted on there all right carry on Now, once you've got all that lot out, <laughs> you can then take that out. <laughs> Howdy. Never over-engineered or complicated at all. Even got sound deadening on the bottom of it. That's how serious they are about <laughs> their quality. Right, so let's just stick them in the here for a minute. So now we have the Wobbler engine. And there you go, even got sound deadening on the bottom of the engine as well. <laughs> Good grief. And now we've got to get down here, oh, join me folks, this is going to be a squeeze, ah, got to get to that bolt there, oh, let me turn you around, there you go, to that bolt there, so at the back of the engine, just release that, and that will then enable you to drain the oil, right, let's get on with it. So for reference, the sump bolt is actually a 19 mil, which you can see there, 19 mil spanner, there you go. But the annoyance is that, um, <laughs> yeah, because of all this cradle to hold the, um, the bottom plate on, there's a bar right across where the oil comes out, so that's going to splatter everywhere. <sighs> Strange engineering sometimes, you've got to say. And here's where it goes. Make sure the tub's in place. This is where all the splatter happens. Look at that. Yeah. Not great, Aldi. And um, while well, that's draining out, let's get the cover off, expose the filter, and that'll be the next job to be changed. And there you go, cover off, and the filter is just down there. Not too bad to get at. Uh, basically, leave this pressure sensor out the way, and you can get a socket. There. Yeah, of course, you're going to be difficult, aren't you? Made in the USA. What? what? Made in the USA? On a German car? Okay. So, as I was saying, uh, it's not too difficult to get that, so I will get my socket in there, and uh, we'll get that off. So, for reference, that's the 32mm. Um, it's easier as well if you take that particular screw out there and release this fuel rail just here and obviously that bracket that goes with it gives you a cleaner shot so rather than uh, damaging the, uh, the filter housing there that gives you a bit of a cleaner shot at it and uh, makes it a lot easier to take it off which is what we're going to do now so it shouldn't be too tight there you go, quick clip and basically that's all it takes, turns it off and I'm going to get myself something to throw that in. So as I say, beware, there is going to be a little bit of mess, not too much, but I've got a box ready to throw it in, which I used to recycle it, and the cloth on standby. Okay, so that is undone all the way. It should now lift, get these out of the way, straight out. Deck. Just give it a second to Drop the oil that's sitting on top there, and straight up, and in there like that. There you go. That is the easiest way to do it. It saves all the mess, all the, the fanning about, to be honest. And, and all I'm left with is a little bit of residue on the pipes there, in the bottom, which I'm going to clean up now. So my next job is to uh, unpack this, this is the new filter, there it is, nice and shiny and clean. Just put a bit of rag on the floor, nice bit of clean rag there, a bit of boat cloth, 
just to put that on so we don't get any cross contamination. Good camera work Reeves, nice looking at the uh, brick and patio cleaner. Um, so there's the filter, um, inside you'll notice there is some O-rings, okay, um, use those, that's my best advice. So what we're going to do is take off this old filter, one of the O-rings is on the bottom there, I believe the other one is somewhere at the top, and around the actual top of the casing itself, if you can just see that, is the other one. So we're going to take this old dirty filter off, and then we're going to put the new O-rings on as well, and then put the new filter on. A few moments later. And it's at this point you realise you got the wrong filter. Reeves, I think you bought the wrong one. <laughs> oh, we're on lockdown. Right, this job may not be finished today. <sighs> so to be fair, um, there was two kinds of filters and I obviously bought the wrong one. My mistake. Stuff like that happens. So I'll change the air filter and then worry about how I'm going to get the air filter. Um, after this is done, and after the oil's drained out. Ah oh well, <laughs> such is life. Oh well, at least the air filter fits. <laughs> well folks, drama averted. One of those, and da, 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 one of the matches. Hey, I've got to give a big shout out to GSF, I really have. So I ordered these click and collect and you go and pick up within the hour. Um, it says uh, give it an hour at least, but yeah, it must have been about probably 40 minutes for me. Uh, they're ready and waiting to go. There was no drama. Um, it was one person in the office at a time, two metres away from the uh, the counter. You literally, he puts the stuff on the counter, steps back, you pay for it. Okay, Gives you the receipt and everything, puts it on the counter, he steps back again, you pick your parts up and go. That's how it should be. Uh, yeah, I've got the oil filter, so I um, can crack on with the job. Brilliant. Thank you, GSF. So, as before, the O-ring comes with the kit. Make sure you change that. And as if by magic, you put that on the top, and then it clips. There you go. It really is as simple as that. Right, let's go and put it on the car. Okay, basically the same procedure to take out is the same to put it back in again. Um, first you move all your junk out of the way <laughs> and that just literally pops down there like that, get it as square as you can, drop it in and then finger tight it up first of all. Um, it is slightly spring loaded so it will make its own seat in there and then obviously Get your socket back on again, put your wrench in reverse and snug it up. Now you don't need to hang off this, um, it will seal with that o-ring, that's what the o-ring is for. But you just basically make sure it's going on, you know, and doing it by hand, you're not cross-threading it. And just snug it up like that. Officially it's 25 newton meters, but I kind of know where 25 newton meters is. I know that sounds big headed, but I worked for an engineering company for many years and I can pretty much get torques within a few pounds and newton meters. Right, so filters in. All that remains to do now is get the sump plug back in and then chuck some oil in it. Um, after that, I'm um, going to do the fuel filter, which is just there, and I'll take you through that. And then going to try and do the cabin filter, which I think is a bit of a pain on this one, but uh, I can't recall so you're going to join me um <laughs> whatever it is you'll be joining me for it so the sump plugs are ready to go in now i change this um i'll change the the actual washer on it last time i did this i believe so don't need to change it every time you can buy brand new ones gsf do those as well but at the moment i don't need one so um, i'm going to clear up that oil and then we'll get the sump plug back in again so the sump plug is in, um, be very careful when you're doing this, um, I think I've, I've mentioned it before, Let me just turn you around you can see what's going on, it is an Ali sump and it is a steel sump plug, so get it in by hand, it is a bit of a strange angle, um, so get it in by hand, I've actually wound that all the way in by hand and all I'm going to do now is get my 19mm ring on it and just give it a little tap tap, that's all it needs. That's all it needs, just to snug it up. Okay, let's get some oil in it. 
Now, as I've mentioned in other previous videos, um, I've used all sorts of funnels over the years, and the best one is one of these. Cut the top off your pot bottles, or your swash bottles. They work brilliantly. Never have a problem with these at all. Okay, let's get some oil in. I showed in the beginning. Um, Miller's oil is the one I've chosen for this. I use Miller's in my own uh, yeah, the S3 over there, bless it. And, and this one is uh, a long life one. And I must say, I'm not into long life. Um, I'm not into oil changes every 20,000 miles. I do them on the S3 every 5,000, on this one every year, which is usually much about the same, about 5,000 miles. Uh, it doesn't get used a lot, this car. It's the missus car and she doesn't go very far. So this is the one I'm using today. Um, it will take pretty much um, all of the five litres. As you can see there, we've got a gauge on the side. Um, at the moment, I've got uh, only about two and a half litres in there. So I'm just gonna quickly check the dipstick. And uh, this is easy, isn't it? With, uh, with a camera in hand. <laughs> what do you do with Reeves? Why do you try and do things like this? Uh, I know the car's jacked up at the moment, but as I said, my driveway slopes down, so it's fairly level even when it's jacked up. So we're just touching the bottom level there. Now bearing in mind, the oil filter's not full yet. Um, so I'm gonna put another a good liter in there and check it again. So there you go, another liter chucked in. Bring it a dipstick again, and we're about halfway. So another half a liter, I would say. As I say, bearing in mind when you start it up, it's gonna get all around the oil ways and it is going to go down a lot. So what I do is fill it up to the top level or just slightly a touch a hair over. And um, then from there, it usually settles down about three quarters of the way. And there you go, on the top level. So that's where it needs to be. All right, quickly start it up and um, see where we are. Don't forget the cap, by the way. <laughs> There you go, serves up a diesel. <laughs> so a diesel with fresh oil in it. Okay, I've left it for a couple of minutes, so let's pull the dipstick now. Uh, give it a quick wipe. Do, 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 do. There you go. Slam it back in again. And back out. And the level says, there you go, three quarters. That will do for me. Uh, I'll check it again in a couple of days and just top it up if necessary, but uh, usually that works well for me. You take it to the top limit, or just slightly over, um, start it up, let it run around for a, a minute or a few seconds, and then let it stand for a while and check it. Um, like I say, um, yes, it's jacked up, and you shouldn't really check the oil on the car when it's jacked up, but as you can see, hopefully, it's pretty level when it's jacked up because the driveway does slope down. Uh, again, I shall put it on level surface and just check it, but um, as long as it's between the low mark and the high mark, you know, you're not far out, let's be honest. Right, next job, fuel filter. Okay, this time we're using the T20. Place it in there, and honestly, well, you know the rest. Let's crack the bolts. Now, you're going to have to take my word for it that the filter change is really easy, because um, I didn't film it. <laughs> so basically... Six screws out, one, two, three, four, five screws out, get it right Reeves. Lift the top off, the filter is in there, put the new filter in, bolt it all back up again. Um, yeah, it's that easy, honestly, um, even though I didn't film it. <laughs> Dull. All right, let's try the cabin filter. I'm just gonna put the cover and everything back on first of all. Uh, the engine cover, and then gonna put the bottom cover on, and then we'll try and attack the cabin filter. I'm not gonna take you through putting it back on again. You see me take it off, it's pointless. And I'll probably forget to press record anyway. <laughs> and what about this for service? <laughs> <laughs> but two in one day, 
drinking us out of our house and home. Something like that. We'll just nip to the shops. Oh, no, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. How's it going then? It's going all right, yeah. Yeah, now you've got the right stuff. New oil's in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just got to put all that stupid cover back on with all those bolts and that thing over there and then put the engine cover back on and then got to do the cabin filter. Do you want to do that? No. Okay. So you'll be a few hours then? No. Ten minutes. Ten minutes to do all that? Yeah, ten minutes. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it was only going to be ten minutes, you could have waited for a coffee. You know when you say ten minutes yeah. and it turns into an hour, that's where we're talking. <laughs> bye, bye bye. Bye. So next job, and if I recall rightly, uh, if it's the same as mine, under here is where the cabin air filter is. There should be a cover with a couple of screws on it. Uh, I can feel one, so we'll take that off. One down. Uh, ah, there it is, right on the other side. So there's a screw just there. There we go. Basically, yeah, they're just like that. That's all they are, just to hold this piece of fabric trim on. And that then should... Why do I always do this when I'm holding the camera? <laughs> Then should pull a cover down. Uh, that. Oh my word. There you go, it's down. And up there, somewhere, let me see if I can get my head in and get the camera in as well. There should be, let's turn you around, there should be a cover that comes off. It really just isn't my day to day. So, um, <laughs> the battery just ran out on my camera. So, the cover's off. And somewhere up here is a cover. Um, doing this purely by feel, there should be a clip on it. Uh, I don't think it's going to work, is it? Probably not. But there is a cover. I'm going to turn you around, stick you up there. There is a cover just up there, and that holds the filter. So let's get that off. So basically, this cover here, it's got a knob just there, and it slides across to release it. And then up there is the cabin air filter. It's looking a bit crusty. So I'm going to get two hands and get it out. So it is a bit, of a, a bit of a fiddly job to do when you're trying to hold a camera as well. But if I turn you upside down, basically, there you go. I've got the new filter in there. So you have to sort of manipulate it in. It's a bit of a tight squeeze, but it goes in there. So that goes up inside there. And then this cover goes back on again. So I'm going to do that now. Sorry I can't film it, but it really needs two hands. And there you go. <laughs> Let's point you up. See if I can get a better angle at this. We're all back on again. Covers back on. Everything's back in place. Um, I said not a not a hard job, but a real fiddly one to get to. But um, yeah, other than that, easy enough. And that's it. It's all done. All finished. And the wife's busy pruning. Have you fun, dear? Oh yeah. <laughs> but as much fun as I just did then. Well, it attacks people as they walk in the house. So I thought I better. It does. Yeah. Get a haircut. So, the car's all done, all the filters changed, and uh, yeah, the sun's coming out, so perfect timing. Now we can go, oh, well, let's go down the coast. Oh, no, we can't, because we're all on lockdown. <laughs> right, guys, all finished. Till next time, catch you later. Bye-bye. And of course, guys, don't forget to hang your Opie air freshener up. These are gorgeous. Opie, please send me more. And as always, guys, don't forget, dispose of your waste all appropriately. Put it into bottles and containers, proper ones. Take it down your recycling centre. Not what I said in one of my videos. Bury it in the garden. It was a joke. The thing not to forget is the counter. So we turn the ignition on. Pull the knob out, let go, turn it off, turn it on, pull the knob out, there you go, pull it again, hold it for a few seconds, resets the counters, there you go, 9000 miles, 365 days.